Biomimicry is a design discipline. It's a way of solving problems. It's a way of, of asking nature to sit at the design table with you, basically. So, and, and it, 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 it really flips the paradigm. For instance, let me give you a couple of product examples. Um, when designers, uh, we, we often, when we're looking for sustainable solutions, we often ask the wrong questions, and we get stuck on them. We say, what's better, paper or plastic? When, for instance, we build a building, and we're going to think about maintenance, we think about how we're going to clean the outside of that building. What detergent are we going to use? And so we get into, what's the least toxic detergent? What's the least energy intensive form of sandblasting or whatever? A biomimic would ask, how does nature clean? If the biomimic asked, what detergent does nature use? You would quickly find that nature doesn't use detergent. And that's a hint. Nature doesn't use detergent, and yet it needs to keep very, very clean. How does nature keep itself clean? The next question is, what in nature needs to stay clean in order for its survival? Because that's where you're going to find the best ideas. And a biologist would answer, a leaf. Because if a leaf gets muddy or dirty, it can't gather solar energy. So they looked, some scientists looked at the sacred lotus, which in Asia is a symbol of purity. It's a plant that grows out of the mud, out of a very swampy environment. But it always looks dry and clean. Why is that? They took the leaf. They, they put it under a microscope. And what they found was that there were microscopic hills and valleys. It was not smooth. It was actually like a mountainscape. Now what happens is, if the leaf had been smooth, dirt particles would adhere to the leaf. And when water hit, rainwater or whatever, the water would spread out and adhere. Instead, with the peaks and valleys, dirt particles sort of teeter on the surface of those peaks. And then when rain comes, it balls up, and it actually picks the dirt particles up, like a snowball taking leaves off your yard, or not your yard, but my yard. They said, this is very interesting. This means that the lotus leaf, and as it turns out, most leaves, have found a way to, to self-clean using the kinetic energy, the motion energy in rainwater. Life has a principle, a deep principle, which you can sum up by saying, why flap when you can soar? Nature is always looking for those free thermals, the free, the free wave to surf. Life surfs for free. And that's the deeper principle. So a company in Germany uh, called uh, Ipso created a building facade paint. And when that paint dries, it has the rough surfaces similar to the lotus leaf so that rain cleans the building. That's a very different paradigm than sitting around and thinking of what detergent to use. Very different paradigm. So it's ancient. How did we, why are we just getting back to it now? Why is biomimicry starting to have a, a resurgence? Why haven't we been doing this all along? And I think one of the reasons is that we honestly believe that we are not nature, that we're different, that nature, that we have technologies, but that nature doesn't. Well, of course nature does. Of course nature does chemistry. Of course nature engineers within a fine degree. It, 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 it has precision. It has, it's doing the same things that we want to do. Will we have the humbleness to go out and ask, to let the forest be our faculty? That's the question. More and more people that I meet do have that humbleness, including business people. And this is key, the fact that business is looking for a new way of operating and realizing that what works can no longer mean 
just what works in the market. Because the market is a response to a particular set of boundary conditions. There are habitat conditions that drive our economy. And those habitat conditions right now are rewarding certain kinds of behavior. The price signals, the regulations, the mindsets. It's rewarding certain kinds of behavior. And to change those habitat conditions to reward sustainable behavior is our mission. I think it's business's mission for the 21st century. And to find out how to be an organism that enhances rather than depletes people and place.